thank you to our three sponsors for supporting our podcast. John Russell's Art Caterers and Milltown Pies, who offer fantastic catering services. Alexander Grace Law, who provide modern and client-led legal services. And SBE Furnishings, who offer high-quality furnishings and electrical items at fantastic prices. But I did all right. I think I got seven. I got seven. Uh, uh, just one less. I got six. Six. I hit a four. <laughs> On purpose as well. Uh, <laughs> I hit their spinner to cover point. So a bit of a thick edge, but uh, yeah, I think it were a bold Janjua, left armour. Yeah. He, he had half a yard. So. I've got no idea who he is. Yeah. What were the scores in that game, uh, Joe? So, uh, Richton batted first and got 181 off their 50 overs. Um, yeah. They had Clinton Perrin as pro. Uh, and we right. were 103 all out off 46. Um, right. You weren't playing, Jess. No, I was just thinking what, uh, you know. No, was Benedict. No, I think, um, so I think it was the same season where we played Richton away, where they got about three million. <laughs> um, did you play in that one as well? I did, unfortunately, yeah. I've got right. a red ink, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, geez. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the game away, they, we had. Um, so this 2001 season, Jez, must have been the one where with John Kent, where he only played a handful of games, yeah. I guess. Did he go home Five with six. a bad back or something like that? That's right. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I can remember that for some reason. Um, and again, Jez, you didn't play in this game either. Right. Rishton, Rishton away. Um, Paul, Paul, Paul Stanley, had, he might have had one wicket, I don't know. But he did. Gone, he had one for nine about one for 90 odd and then he broke his hand trying to st- broke his wrist trying to stop her <laughs> Russ Wally and Clinton Perrin put on absolutely loads they both got tons they both get tons yeah they put on yeah. um 180 yeah and Russ Wally absolutely smashed us all over um, yeah. and we had we had Graham Lloyd as sub Graham Lloyd as sub pro uh, so what, how many did they get Joe? they got uh, 340 340. <laughs> you got 340. Um, uh, the bowling figure taggers. Uh, Matt Hope, four overs, sorry, 14 overs, four for 75. Paul Stanny, eight overs, one for 76. Um, Proc, four overs, none for 20. Ryan Hesketh, six overs, one for 28. Graham Lloyd, 13 overs, none for 84. And Blaise, five overs, none for 41. Um, well, I remember Graham Lloyd. Uh, Graham Lloyd batted three, I think. He went in, he hit his first three balls for four. So I remember us being on balcony thinking, yep, here we go, here we go, here we go. We only need 320. Yeah. And then next ball, next ball, they were out. Um, Yeah, we were 118 all out of 31 overs. Uh, But a a late rally from us because we were, our top five were, were 66 for six. Did you do? Did you play that game? Or? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I played. Got eleven. Yeah, but I, I, I think guess, I mean um, just to throw into Gary here, and just as a, a little um, topic to discuss, what three batters to play against? Clinton Perrin, Sleep, and Russell Waller. Yeah. Russell Davis yeah. weren't playing as well, were they? Tell me he weren't playing. No, Russell had Russell had stopped back then. I think. Well, yeah. if, you, if you'd have thrown Craig Smith into that mix as well, yeah, he as took- well, yeah. He took us apart plenty of times. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, we, yeah. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good trio, is that? It is. Yeah. It's hundred. They've all got hundreds in them, and yeah. they're highly likely one of them to get hundred every. You know, every time you play against them. Yeah. Right? None. None of them are taking a backward step, are they? No. 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 Good positive players. So, I guess you. That's your first season. How many games did you play that year? Can you remember? Um, can't remember. I'd probably say four, five. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, like I said earlier, yeah. Jez, I, I, to, you know, if we're being honest, I were nowhere near ready for first team cricket, and um, had a traumatic experience down at Burnley against James Anderson. Um, I think what happened one, there? one of the games at uh, well, not much. <laughs> 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 um, I, I played against it's going back. I played against Todmorden at home, um, and their pro were a big Aussie lad called Matt Nichol, yeah. and he were absolutely rapid. And night before, down club, it rather Matt Stanny's 21st or it were Matt Stanny and Adele's engagement. So 
So needless to say, we'd, you know, we'd had a few beers and that before. Um, I woke up, weren't in the mood for playing, weren't really in the mood for playing cricket, feeling a bit under weather. Um, anyway, so it turns up that day and I went down to bat at four. And but basically, because of how quickly Nicholson were bowling, he absolutely swiftly off at batting that day. And I think he did, he did quite well against it. Um, he definitely hung around for a few overs. He absolutely peppered Swift. And I remember the day after, it looked like somebody had been throwing darts at Swifter. He had these, <laughs> he had these bruises all over his body, and it was horrendous. But anyway, I went down to bat at four that day against Nicholson. He <laughs> uh, were a bruiser, though, weren't he, Swifter? He were, yeah. He, he could have caught any bruises, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Before we move on, can I just what? ask what circumstances you happened to see Swifty's body the day after? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously played and we're in dressing room, getting unchanged. All oh, right, so. okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, anyway, so um, I went out to bat at four and Nicholson's bowling really quick. So obviously a few old Reds have got together and thought, I can't send daggers in against this lad. So thankfully, you know, I, I, I got moved down the order and weren't needed to bat. So a few weeks later, I can't remember how many weeks later this were, but um, so we're playing down at Burnley, big derby game down there, uh, decent crowd on. I think it might have been game, Jez, when we got them, uh, you remember them, uh, them waterproof jackets we got that were sponsored by Multisport? Yeah, yeah, I do. You know, yeah. For some random reason, they were yellow and black. Yeah. That's I think it was that game, and we had his photo taken, didn't we? Team photo. We were like, we were right proud of ourselves, weren't we, with these jackets on? Yeah. Can you <laughs> can you remember? Can I just interrupt there and just tell a little story about them jackets? They were. Who was it that owned Multisport? Is was it Q Q's uncle? Q's yeah. uncle. Yeah. That's right. And so we've got these. We've had the cotton. Uh, you know, tracksuit tops and training tops before. And, and we'd said, look, you know, waterproof tops would be fantastic. Can we get some of those? So we got them provided and they were good quality, you know, they're good waterproof tops, but they sewed in the back the the, the more sport logo, sewed it through with like an electric sewing machine. So when it rained, you got piss wet through through <laughs> like stitching. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Stan still got his. Yeah, Stan still wears his. Still wet. Yeah, he just yeah. randomly turned yeah. up. I think it was one game last season. He yeah. randomly turned up. We're on twenty yeah. years old. Yeah, yeah. So go on, you're at Burnley, I guess. Yeah, so we're at, we're at Burnley, and uh, obviously a big game, decent crowd on. Uh, I can't remember if we batted first, uh, first or second, but once again, I'm down to down to bat at four. So I'm sat there, and obviously at Burnley, you're basically side on, aren't you, watching the game? Uh, and James Anderson's playing. So he was a little bit older than me, he were Anders, when we were growing up. But for one reason or another, I'd never, I'd played against him, but I'd never, he'd never bowled in any games I'd faced. And by this point, obviously, words got round that he's, you know, he's bowling at a, a really good pace. Didn't realize, you know, he didn't realise how quick it was until you, until you actually saw him bowl. So I'm, I'm sat there watching side on at Burnley, down to go in at four. Anderson's peeling in off side screen. And honestly, he was bowling absolute rocky. I couldn't sit ball. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if you, you remember, Jez, dude, but back then it was quite erratic as well, weren't it? So, it, yeah. you know, it, it was going everywhere. It was bowling like beamers, it was bowling bouncers, it was bowling absolute jaffers. And basically, I'm sat there thinking, you know, it, if he bowls a beamer at me or he bounces, I'm not getting out of the way of it. There's absolutely no chance. It's going to hit me. Um, so we go one down. Your Nicky, your Nicky round. So Nicky, Nicky's walking off. He sits down. And Nicky said exactly that. He said his biggest weapon is he don't know where he's bowling it. So why were we went, meant to know where it's going? Yeah. So I'm sat there thinking, you know, he's got Nicky where he is. And Nicky's been playing for a long time. <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, honestly, I was absolutely, I was shitting my pants. <laughs> So, and I'm due in at any minute. But what I'm thinking is, right, well, against Todd, Nicholson were, Nicholson were quick. Uh, they moved me down order. I'm thinking they'll move me down order. They, they've got to move me down order. Wait, you think oh. this when you've got your pads on? I've got my pads on. So I'm not thinking, I'm not watching the game, thinking what's he bowling, you know, looking at field and what have you. Uh, my head's all over the show. Absolutely all over the show. So next wicket falls. I can't remember who it were. And 
I'm I'm standing up, but whilst I'm doing it, I'm expecting somebody to tell me to sit down. <laughs> uh, Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave Wally ran after me. So I'm thinking, we'll send Dave Wall in before me, definitely, and I'll just get shunted in that order. So next week it falls, and I'm still thinking, that surely they can't send me in against this. Surely. Like I said, I've, barely, I've not played a lot of second-team cricket. I, I bet he were bowling five yards quicker than anything I'd ever faced. Anything. Yeah. Um, so I, I stands up, and it felt like I were in a dream. So I'm kind of walking out, and I'm thinking, somebody's going to shout, somebody's going to shout me back in a minute. Well, that nervous, I could bet. <laughs> I was that nervous I could, I could barely hold back I think I dropped back on the way out and, and still as I'm walking onto the pitch I'm still expecting somebody to shout Agus so-and-so's going in sit down it was probably only it was probably only until I got halfway towards wicket where I thought you know I'm going to have to do this now so like, like you said Joe I was in no uh, no frame of mind whatsoever to go and face that you know it must have been bowling at like 85 miles an hour you know, and so I goes out, I took guard, I don't know why. <laughs> you know, it, so I, I, I text me guard, and he's at the end of his run, I'm thinking, please don't bounce me, a bowl of beam, because I am not getting out of the way of it. So he runs up, bowls, and at this point, I think I'm that nervous that I've lost me, I've lost me hearing. I can't hear anything. <laughs> because I remember going, I, I remember going forward, like a, a token gesture, off, got a talking gesture off striding and he, he come running down with it in Anders with his arms in his head and I thought I'm nowhere near it absolutely nowhere near it I thought he was feeling for caught behind until I turned round and my stumps were absolutely everywhere this is obviously for, this is obviously the first ball um, and <laughs> bat under arm and as I'm walking off I know it sounds bad but I thought just thank God for that Thank God, I'm, just thank God I haven't been hurt. <laughs> so, yeah, what a great story! Yeah. My confidence, my confidence took a bit of a took a bit of a battering that day, and I don't think I ever recovered from that. Well, Better say that eighteen months, eighteen months later, we we'll played for England. So, I mean, there's such different trajectories there, isn't there? In <laughs> where people, well, yeah. Um, uh, with, um, you were saying that you know you said that you probably weren't ready to bat at four in the first team. Do you think going in that early when you didn't think you were ready hindered your development? Uh, like I said, Joe, it, I'll be honest with you. When I was younger, I didn't really believe in this hell anyway. And yeah. it's summer I've got better we as I've got older, uh, which happens naturally anyway because you know you score more runs, you get more experience, and you just you know for me I've just started to believe in myself as I've got older a little bit more but uh, I, didn't, I didn't believe in myself I didn't have them runs I didn't have any 50s under my belt going into the first team thinking you know you, to be honest I don't think I, did, I didn't think I deserved to play because I've not really got a score you know I just thought we were playing because they were short or what have you and um, yeah and I just I, I, I never recovered from that and I'm, I'm amazed we've spent this long talking about my first team career to be honest because <laughs> I think what we're at about 50, 15 games or something but yeah, it, I guess it don't, that. I mean that that side of it, it. You know, it's not about where you play, what you play. It's how you enjoy it and how you contribute to a club. You know, like like we've got, and that story you've told there is an absolute classic. You know, we've we've well, listened it, to quite a few. Yeah, it's a decent tale to tell, isn't it? Because he's England's greatest ever bowler, isn't he now? So yeah, and that's one yeah. of the things about cricket, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. you can play against yeah, anyone yeah. really, can't you? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but just just breaking that down, Phil. Just breaking that down, Phil. You know, you look at how you know the the game before. You knew that you know this lad's quick and they're going to move me around and they will look after you. You know, and the fact that you know he's going back probably three decades and a similar story of you know Nicky's come in the dressing room and not filled you with confidence, which you know I'm no doubt he'll listen to this and. And we'll laugh and joke about it, but it's exactly the same. That time when I, I can't remember it. Uh, I don't know if Gary will be able to help me. When Brian Higgin came back in dressing room, and it was you know it's a, a, a poor wicket, and someone's bowling at the speed of light, and Brian's come in, took his left pad off. Other people are sat around trying to get the pads on shaking, and he said, "Some fucker's going to get killed out there today." <laughs> Yeah, his, his phrase was, it's like Goose Green. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but that was my that was my thought straight away because I thought you know Nicky can obviously play. He's been around a, you know a long time. Yeah. I thought you know he's, he's got and he'd, he'd rattle Nicky. I thought he's got Nicky rattle there. Yeah. I thought you know God knows what happens when I'm when I go in here. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but like you were saying, then to be honest, I never really, I didn't think I, I, I definitely weren't ready. I didn't, I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe that I'd earned to play, earned right to play first team cricket, and that just, you know, it just dented my confidence even more. Really, um, yeah. I, I, I don't. Well, that I don't. I can't remember playing again. That I don't know if I played that season after that or not. It's a yeah. long time ago, isn't it? Twenty yeah, years ago. Isn't it? So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So then, you know, you're developing as a cricketer, you're getting older, um, and, you you know, you're clearly a real, you know, strong character within the cricket club. People look up to you, you're contributing to the club atmosphere and, and playing in the seconds and developing. Um, you know, how, how were you, how were your, was your mindset when you were like early 20s and going through the, the 20-year-old to get into the, Mid twenties. What was your mindset then around the cricket? Because what what years would that have been? That been late two thousands, probably. Um, like you said, Jez, early twenties. To be honest, that's when I started to mature a bit, really. Because after you know, after that little spell at first team in two thousand and one, um, yeah. I was working at time. You know, I left school and got a job straight away, so I had a bit of money in my pocket. And uh, the the thing were the, the lads who were playing cricket with at time. I got don't get me wrong, I got on with them and they were great lads, but they weren't re, they weren't my mates. And yeah, my mates yeah. were a, a different set of lads who were out on beer every weekend. And I was playing cricket, and I had a period of time where I felt like I was missing out on you know missing out on what my mates were doing. Yeah. You know, going to Blackpool, going to yeah. Blackpool, want beer during the day, during the summer and what have you. Now, yeah. so I'll be, I, I got a bit. I was close to packing it in a few times and looking back, thank God I didn't because I was packing it in for the wrong reason. Yeah. Um, but I carried on and I think the main reason I carried on is because my mum enjoyed coming what my mum enjoyed coming watching me play. She always has done. And yeah. She to be honest, she thought it was keeping me on straight and narrow, which it were. Yeah. You know, it was it were stopping me from going out on beer all day at weekend and getting to bother as you do. And um, so I had a couple of years where I messed about with it a bit and 2002, I, yeah. I missed start at season. I fell off a bus at Burnley bus station and did all my ankle ligaments in after I'd had a few shandies. And so I missed start at season. That were a bit of a, a non starter. Uh, 2003, I had a re- really good start at season, scored a lot of runs and absolutely fleeced my dad at start at season because my dad used to give me little incentives and it was good because he didn't really understand cricket. So he kind of gave me incentives. It's with Quite, they were quite easy, easy to achieve. So he started with he started with saying if you get if you get twenty I'll, if you get twenty I'll give you a five and then I'll give you a five to run after that. So I started getting twenties and thirties every week, and then he obviously realised he was onto a, a bit of a loser there. So he said right fifty if you get fifty I'll give you twenty quid and then I'll give you a five to run after you get fifty. So to, to started season in two thousand three I got ninety seven in my first game. <laughs> 53 in my second game and then 82 not out in my third game. So it, I, don't, I don't think he ever fared up fully. I had to, I had to let him off yeah. at some point. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's what I said, yes. <laughs> uh, I kind of messed about with it for a couple of years and to be honest, other people have looked at me and probably thought, he's not interested, you know, he's, he's not going to He's not gonna last. Yeah. Yeah. And then it got, to a, it got to a point where I thought, look, I need to make a decision here. If I'm going to carry on playing and I've got to get my head down and get stuck into it and uh, make an effort, get involved more, you know, I'd have a beer after the games, but I'd never stop down for a long time after the game. I'd probably have a beer and then go, go and meet my mates in town. Um, yeah. But I thought, right, you've got to make a decision here. Get your head down, get on with it, or just just stop playing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Don't, don't carry on. Don't carry on turning yeah. up, complaining that you're not going out with your mates and, because yeah. you're not doing anybody any further, Zed. Yeah, no. so I think once I once I got my head around that and said, right, you know, get stuck into it, you know, not just the committing yourself to uh, playing side, but, you know, yeah. social side of it as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, from uh, like 2004 onwards, um, I just got to know got to know lads a lot better, like Dooch, Stanny, you know, Gav Shields, Paul Stanny, and 
you know, they be, they be, that's when they become mates, and that's when you know yeah. it's all more enjoyable because they're all there, yeah. they're all there together, aren't they? No, no, so really, so so you you know you, you've answered part of the question there in the those middle years of the two thousand. You've really got yourself. You've made the decision that you want to commit to the cricket, but also make it you know quite a big part of your life. Get these lads who are the top top friends, top lads that you're going to you know mate around with them and become part of that cricket club um, folklore, if you will. I mean, 2004, do you want to talk about that uh, that incident in 2004? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> well, I, well, I'm thinking of one, if you've got some others. Uh, there might have been a couple of others, but I think my mum's going to listen to this, so I'll... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, t- so, where's the cup final? Yeah, you're not on about Blazers tongue, are you? <laughs> well, you can tell, them bo- tell us both. <laughs> well, a bit of a story from the semi-final. So semi-final against Enfield, one of the most unbelievable games of cricket you'll ever watch. Um, one of the reasons is that their pro, Alviro Peterson, is absolutely smashing it to all parts. Looks like he's going to get 300 on his own, never mind the team get 300. And then he's 150, what, 150 not out, and then he just lobbed one up to like a part-time off-spinner. Um, you'll find he was <laughs> deceived in the flight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but anyway, it's semi-final. So that day, there were nowhere near as big a crowd on as was the cup final for obvious reasons. But uh, Frank, Frank Entwistle, had set up his own bar in Nat West Ham. Uh, so knowing Frank, he'll give it a really like daft name. Uh, and it, so it would do it Stella Challenge. So it would, it would 10 can. You paid your money for your 10 cans of Stella and Frank were working behind the bar and he'd, he'd mark you off that you'd had a can. So me and, me and Tommy Browley, Everybody remembers Tommy. Yeah. Um, so me and Tommy Brown are knocking these Stellas back, and uh, all of a sudden Tommy's next to me, and I didn't know what was going on with him, but he was like sticking his tongue out, and I thought he was having some kind of like allergic reaction, like a, a, some kind of fit. Anyway, he, so it turns out he's he's drinking his, so he's on his ninth can of Stella. He remember he remembers, it, and there's a wasp inside. So. And what he said were, I said to him, he actually said after, I knew there was something in my drink, but I thought it were a fag end, so I thought it would be right. So he were will- <laughs> So he's got he thinks there's a fag end in this can of Stella, and he thinks it's all right to drink that, but it turns out it's a wasp. So he's kind of swelled it around in his mouth, wondering what's that. So this wasp has stung him on the tongue. Straight away his tongue's cut his tongue's out there, he can't talk properly. Um but so he got, but he goes back to the bar wanting his tenth can of Stella that he's paid for, and he can't talk properly. Fr- Frank thinks he's pissed, absolutely pissed out of his head, and that he, he shouldn't be drinking anymore. And says, "Tommy, I'm, I'm not giving you another one. You've had enough." But Tommy can't talk properly because he's got <laughs> stung on the tongue by a wasp. So, <laughs> so he failed the he challenge. Right. He did, yeah. Uh, but anyway, go, go into the final. So, you know, where's the cup final? Obviously, one of the greatest days in our history as a club. Um, it, the, you know, the, the days are blur, as it will have been for a lot of people. But, um, you know, everyone will remember you had, you, you had your marquees all day at bottom of the ground. It was a great setup. And I ended up in a marquee with a bunch of lads. I can't even remember who it was, to be honest. It's that long ago, and I drank that much that day. Um, anyway, and when Tiffa were on a few months back, I think somebody somebody suggested that, that it was Tiffa who decided for us to start drinking flaming Sambuca. I, I don't think that... He might correct me on this, but I don't think that's right. I can't think why Tiffa had done that, because he was playing. Uh, mind you, we are talking about Tiffa here, so... But anyway, so somebody's decided to start drinking flaming Sambuca. So me being, you know, way too much to drink by that point. Thought, yeah, this is a great idea. So we weren't doing it in cups or glasses. We were putting it in each other's mouth and setting it on fire in his mouth. So I'd never done this before. Um, so a few of lads did it. It was my turn. Tilts my head back. Mouth of Sambuca. Lighter goes in. All of a sudden, I feel like there's a, like an explosion in my mouth, which there is because my mouth, you know, I've got like uh, my mouth's on fire. So I spat it out, but I had my head back. So as I've spat it out, it's gone all over my face, all down my neck, but it's still alive. So everyone who stood around me is kind of taking a step back as if to say, 
Jesus Christ, you know, he's on fire. <laughs> so I've managed to <laughs> I've managed to put it out. I can't remember how we put it out. Um, put it out, could feel it were a bit of a mess. And there were a few people saying, it's a mess, is that? You, you, know, you, need, you need to go to hospital. Uh, actually ended up seeing St. John's Ambulance. And St. John's Ambulance, rather than that they wanted me to go to hospital and get it looked at, but... Obviously, I'm thinking, you know, you've absolutely no chance. We're about to win Worsley Cup. It's going to be one of the best nights we've ever had now. I'm not sitting in here and eat whilst everyone's, <laughs> everyone's up here down at Lorex. So I'd rather be scarred for life. <laughs> so I just, so just I left it, carried on for the rest of the night. So I woke up morning after. And you know when you've been out on a, on a night out and you've done something daft or something, something's gone wrong and you and you, you wake up and you don't realise it was but after a few seconds, you get that feeling in your stomach, and you think, "But I didn't know what it were. I couldn't. Re- I couldn't really remember what I got." So, I, so I get up and I goes into the bathroom, and I look in the mirror, and I thought, I "Thought," and, and obviously everything come flooding back to me then. So I thought, "It's a mess, is this? I need to go up to the hospital." But the problem I had, my dad had booked day off as well, so he were off work. He was downstairs because he. He'd been on the game the day before. Wanted to have a few beers, so we booked the day off. I thought, I've got to get, try and get past my dad here to get to hospital, to get it looked out without him seeing it. I thought, I can't tell him how I've done it. It'll go absolutely berserk. So I get changed, goes downstairs. He comes walking through straight away to, on, onto the stairs. Sees it, what have you done? I thought, I can't tell him. He'll go mad. I'll get a, I'll get a right bollock. I thought, it's not even move. I said, I said, when I went to help out before the game, put my marquees up, I said... Um, Obviously, I've been touching grass. I think I've, uh, I think I've had an allergic reaction to some, uh, some kind of pesticides. <laughs> <laughs> so, Did he buy it? I don't, I don't, I don't think so, Joe. I, I just, I just said to him, I said I'm going to hospital. And I'll never forget. I got on bus at uh, Lane Ends. The bus was going along Aki Road, and this was in Aki Road, and it's brand new. You know what I mean? There's people getting on from Aki Road. And they were looking at me, and I thought, I thought it must be bad if somebody from Mackie Rolls looking at me like that. <laughs> yeah. Good, good day, good day, though, isn't it? Yeah, thinking, why is Simon Weston on the bus to Burley Town Centre? Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus! Oh, I guess, I guess. We'll have to put a dis- yeah. we'll have to, we're gonna have to put a disclaimer on this uh, episode. I think don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will. No, I, I guess those stories are fantastic as we, you know, as we talk about your career and we come in and it's, you know, it's just so much fun. So then, you know, you go towards the, the late 2000s and, and in, you know, into 2010 and beyond. What's your recollection and thoughts around senior cricket at that stage? Uh, well, I'm not getting to that point. I'm not played first team for a while, Jess. Um, yeah. I think that- my last proper first team game, well, that was 2007. Um, yeah. And, and I batted seven that day, got got a duck, uh, true to form in first team. But um, a bit disappointed that game because the week before, I'd actually, I'd got a ton in second team, batted all the way through. Yeah. And that game against Enfield at home, I think it were, there were an opening spot available. And that were because I'd. I've always loved, I've always preferred opening batting. I've always loved opening batting. I've always struggled batting down order, waiting around to go in. You know, I like to have a start game, bat first rate. Right. You know, you're opening. You, you know what's going on there. Get your pads on, get out there, yeah. or obviously field first, and then and then get out there. I've, I've always hated waiting around to go into bat. Um, yeah. So that was the one game where I thought I, I think I'll get a shot here, opening batting. And I did, I batted seven, and it were actually, uh, Pat, I think Paddy opened batting that day. Uh, so I was disappointed at that, and obviously didn't get any runs. So that was the last time I, you know, I played it first thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, going into late 2000s, um, I'd had a bit of a dry spell, really, in seconds, because my eyes had gone. I needed glasses, and I, I didn't, I just, I didn't realise it. I didn't know, because it's not, you know, I'm not completely blind or out, but. I just, I just need them to sharpen everything up. And my eyes were going, and I didn't realise it. I only realised, because at the time at work, I was driving a forklift truck, and I had a medical at work for my forklift truck, and she said, you need to go to opticians, because you need glasses. So I went to opticians, uh, they prescribed me some glasses, and as soon as I put them on and started having a net in them, I couldn't believe I'd spent like two years playing without them. Everything just, you know, become a lot clearer, and 
that red blur that had been seen come down. It, it, you know, it yeah. looked like a, it looked like a red ball. So I had a bit of a lean spell yeah. in that, that period. And then uh, 2010, I took, um, there were a big, big sea change of players around that time because, you know, like 2007, eight, nine, you know, Matt Stanley was still playing, Gav was still playing, Paul Stanley was captain around then, Phil Edward at Warhouse then, Swifty were playing, you know, me and Swifty up at batting, he used to absolutely love it, you know, we'd, we'd put a partnership on every week, me and Swifty, they were great with me, with Swifty, and I think I needed that after I'd come down for the first team, I just needed somebody to put my yeah. arm around me really, and just, you know, yeah. say, hey, hey, don't worry about it, you can play, and, you know, don't be too hard on yeah. yourself. Um, yeah. But yeah, there were a big, big, uh, Big turnover of players around that round about that point. Uh, Gavin, you know, Gavin Stanley retired. Um, uh, Phil Ed, I think Phil Ed didn't retire, but just decided, you know, he, he was going to give it a miss for a couple of years. I think Swifty left. Paul Stanley jacked it in. So we like that was probably lost like half the team really. Um, yeah. So I, I had to uh, obviously I put my name forth at captaincy, and I wanted to do it, but I had to do it really because there were no there were no, nobody else really to do it. So that that were. You know, you know, once again, from a captain point of view, the baptism of fire because there were a lot of young lads who come into the dressing room who, who I didn't really, I didn't really know them. Obviously, I knew them from seeing them knocking about and knew that they played in thirds, but never really played any cricket with them. And uh, you know, you like so like Lewis Marsden, Reese Woodworth, uh, Carl Oak were coming through then. We're probably uh, we were coming through. I think Lavers were a couple of years later, I think, Joe. What were you coming through? About 2010 or a bit later? I were in the first team. So oh, all right. <laughs> that would have been sorry. Sorry, sorry, X. Um no, that was so I played half a year with you in the second team, mm. which was our I, I played probably four games the previous season and then half a year after that. Because our first game where we opened the batting was very memorable against Bake or Pagas. I don't know if you can remember <laughs> remember no, it. Uh, you know what? I, I don't I don't remember this game, but I'm quite honoured that Paul, that somebody's got a superstition that's yeah. not named after me, but it's based on me. Yeah. And Paul Stanley, isn't it? Yeah. He never watches first ball of a game. First ball of a game, it's or it's season. Of every game. Of every game, because I got run out at first ball of the game at Bake Up. <laughs> It was. Um, you, you, I don't remember it though. It was. I think I can't remember. I can't remember who was bowling. I think it might have been somebody like a lad called Sam Sanderson or something. And you flicked this ball into the leg side, and you shouted. You shouted three <laughs> straight, straight, <laughs> straight away. Which as a ball at game. game. <laughs> ball at game. And which as a kind of fifteen-year-old, I thought fair enough. I think this might be optimistic, but. <laughs> So, so anyway, we were, we we went, we got one, and then we got another one. And I set off, I was running, I was in all right. And then I just heard the kind of clatter of stumps and um, and a turn round. Uh, and Agas, Agas were run out, walking up, and I thought, oh, oh, oh no, that's, this is going to be my fault, isn't it? <laughs> when, when I get back in, I better get some... Johnny White had told us a, a couple of weeks ago when we when we spoke to him about it, you, you were actually on both both your knees, apparently. <laughs> when you run out, you'd slid on your knees <laughs> to, to get in. Um, Can't be many people who've been run out off the first ball of the game, coming of back a, for a third. Of, a, of the season. Of first ball se- of the season. The season. All right, OK. <laughs> Um, it was yeah. <laughs> um, Matt Stanley will want Matt Stanley will once run out going for going oh, for a one. single and when he yeah going for a single and this were down at Burnley one of the angriest I've ever seen the angriest I've ever seen someone Paul Stanley that day um, we were playing Burnley they, this is second team they had like an all star second team out. Like Michael Kelly were playing damn pick up up regular good second team as they had shocker. And we'd bowl them out for like 110, 120, you know, really good performance with ball. And um, I think we were about 50 for one chasing it. We were absolutely cruising. I, mean, I got about 30 odd, got got out. Um, and then before we knew it, we were, I think we were about 70 for six or 70 for seven. It was just ridiculous. So I'm sat, we sat there in front of changing rooms at Burnley. Paul Stanley was absolutely blazing at how we look like we're throwing this game away. So Matt Stanley's been run out. So Stanley, he's, he's even angrier now, he's Paul. And, but as he comes back in, he says, <laughs> at first, I thought it, I thought it was three. 
and he's been run out going for a single. I think it was. <laughs> I think it was sing. I think it was single. And he said at the first one eighty, I thought it was three. But Paul Stanley's conflict. Paul Stanley's completely lost plot. So and he's ended up. He didn't do it on purpose, but he's ended up smashing a plate next to him. So this plate smashed, and there were a few people on the balcony up at Burnley. And one of them, literally, as soon as the noise faded of it smashing, this bloke shouts, Oi, it's not a great wedding. I'm, I'm sat next to Paul. I was absolutely dying to laugh. I thought, if he sees me laughing here, it, it'll kill me, these bare hands. Anyway, we actually went on to wink gear by the skin of his teeth. But, uh, yeah, so. Brilliant. I mean, the, it was, when I first went into the second team, Jez, there was Haggers, um, Matt Marquis, Matt Stanny. Uh, Paul Stanny was playing as well, Matt Doughty. Um, can you remember a game at Rishton, Aggers, where he was absolutely saturated? Um, <laughs> that him, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was... That Matt it, Stanny had a... <laughs> yeah, go he on. had a meltdown, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. But... Get the game on, Joe, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Matt Stanny had had a meltdown because he was stood in a puddle in the ad. Yeah. Can you remember the old, like, Adidas... They had these old Adidas boots that looked like climber cool. So they had vents in the bottom, which were great. You know, they kept your feet dry and whatever, until you stood in something wet and all the water used to seep through the bottom and your feet <laughs> were just uh, saturated. And, and Matt Stanley had stood in a puddle. And then for the rest of the game, it was saying, even though they were like 70 for nine, we, were like, we shouldn't be playing. We shouldn't be out here. Absolute, absolute shocking. Anytime we yeah, talk about we can. Yeah, well, vice captain, that's it. Yeah. Sorry, Jez. Well, and you got the game on, Aggers. You got the game on. Get the game on. We won, Jez. So. Yeah, you got the game on. <laughs> Send more house to save the house.